Finally, I promised to tell you about my main workstation for a while, but I was waiting for a suitable moment to do so. Because I think it's better to show how to build one instead of just talking about it. Who is this station for? This station will be perfect for video editors, content creators, CG and VFX artists, obviously, and for anyone uh, whose software benefits from multi-GPU setups. And of course, gamers would appreciate the performance. In my case, I benefit uh, with Octane Render Engine, DaVinci Resolve, uh, Blackmagic Fusion. All these softwares utilize several GPUs. More GPUs I have, more powerful these softwares are. This workstation won't benefit you as much if you're rendering traditionally with CPU. So does it mean CPU doesn't matter on such a machine? It does, but it's good to understand the technology and uh, what exactly you need. Traditional CPU renderers would benefit from more cores, like in Xeon processors. So if you're rendering with CPU, this would be the most important part for you. How important is CPU for those who choose uh, GPU rendering? Still important, but in another way. CPU affects the speed of the software's viewport itself. For instance, Cinemas 4D uh, interface utilizes only one core. As I don't need CPU for rendering, I would benefit from less cores, but more powerful ones. I'm using i7-6860K processor. It has six cores, 3.6 gigahertz each. I know it's not the most powerful cores, but some of my softwares I use still benefit for, from multi-threading. At the time I was building this, it was the most uh, optimal solution. Your CPU choice will also depend on the motherboard you're using. I'm using Asus Ramp Rampage 5 Extreme, which utilizes LGA 2011 ver version 3 socket. When buying the parts, check if everything is compatible. Today I'm doing a full uh, maintenance of all my working machines. So render units are simple and built, and all I will do there is just update the software. This bad boy needed a full maintenance and a lot of parts needed to be replaced. To start the fun part, let's go in the beginning of the day. Yes, it was. New GPU water blocks, new radiators, CPU water block, new bigger SSD, and new 10 terabytes hard drive. Water cooling liquid, distilled water, tube, some screws and new fittings and the machine itself. Water-cooled systems needs regular maintenance in order to avoid water damage. This station's first build was with three water-cooled 1080 cards and one 1070, which is still there. Since then I have upgraded to 1080 Ti's and accidentally ordered wrong water blocks. I sent water blocks back, but uh, never had time to think about it since then. So that's why these three cards are cooled by air now. And this is something we're gonna change today. Firstly, why didn't I want all four cards 1080 or 1080 Ti's? Well, the reason for that is that this card, 1070, it's my output card. I have three screens and they're all connected to this card. Whenever I'm rendering, I'm using these three cards and render units and my system stays responsive because the output is through this card. I can even play games while I'm rendering. Secondly, why should you care about water cooling in general? Did you know that you can lose up to 40% of your performance if your GPUs are too hot? Thirdly, with water cooling, you can overclock your system, CPU, GPUs, and even light overclocking can show significant difference in performance. Now, before you get too excited, you should know that you will have to maintain your system regularly. I'm doing it every year, 
but it is recommended to do it every half a year. Maintenance includes full station disassemble, inspection of the elements, cleaning, and often replacement of the parts. To explain the importance of maintaining your system, I have my old water block here. See this? This is what increases the risk of leak. Same story happens with radiators. Over time, they wear off and the rust appears on them. Now imagine what can happen if it will leak on your GPUs, motherboard or power supply. This is obviously not from scratch build, but I left the build list in the video's description. All necessary parts are also listed there. And today we will cover the most frightening parts with the water cooling loop. Firstly, I will disassemble everything that I want replaced. Now when I removed some elements, I would like to get rid of dust. For that, I'm using compressed air. Now I would like to drain the water from the system. For this, I have a dedicated tube here, because otherwise I don't know how to do it. This will do. Right now, to make it, uh, sure everything is safe, I'll put a lot of tissues around. See, that's dangerous. The process looks really, really messy, but the result will look neat and nice. At the moment, it looks like I killed someone, because I used to have a red li liquid in it. Look. Now, because I didn't maintain the station regularly, you see my clear tubes got kind of beige color. I want to replace them all to have really clean look. I'll disassemble the water-cooled 1070 and all the pipes plus the top radiator. <laughs> to clean out the CPU's thermal paste out and then put a new one in. It's time to do the most interesting part. We will disassemble the regular graphic cards and turn them into water-cooled ones. To do this, you will need uh, tiny screwdrivers like this one I have here. This label here means this card was not touched yet. Firstly, I need to get rid of these screws. and a bunch of really, really, really tiny ones here, 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 do, 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 do. Probably the most frightening part in all this building process is messing with GPUs. You can definitely buy pre-built ones, they will come installed already, but I like to do everything myself. Since I did it for numerous amount of times, I'm not afraid of it anymore. But I was afraid of it too. Trust me, it's not that scary. For instance, this card, this 1080 Ti, was disassembled before because the label is broken. And this happened when I ordered my wrong water blocks. I tried to install it on this one. Then I just assembled it back and it worked for a year. GPUs are not as fragile as you think they are. You need to unscrew these two screws here. To unscrew these screws, you will need a attachment like that. Now when all screws are gone, you're ready to take it apart. Just pull it like that. Be careful, because there are lead and fan connected in there. Just take it out. This is the standard air-cooled uh, setup. It has thermal paste, thermal pa pads, and there's the fan. 
we don't need this anymore. You need to clean all thermal paste off the GPU chip. This is actually GPU. This all is not. This what what gives you power. All water blocks comes with uh, new thermal pads and all you need to screw everything with thermal paste included. I will start with thermal pads first. What you need to do is you need to make sure that all of that is replicated. So make sure you will cover everything. Just in case, if by any reasons these thermal pads came off when you were taking air block off and you don't know where you have to place them, in the instruction included with water block, there is a seam where, where you have to place the pads. Also interesting fact, all my cards are Founders Edition and I'm using EKWB water blocks. This is a Sla uh, Slovakian company and now instead of producing dedicated water blocks for each card separately, they're producing these blocks that will fit any GTX series, so Titans, 1060s, 1070s, 1080s, 1080s Ti, and all that jazz. When all the pads are there, we need to put thermal paste on the chip. Don't worry if the thermal paste will get to that green uh, area. It's not scary. Just put an X like that. That should be enough we're ready to apply our water block on it. Here we go. Turn it around. I need a box or something. Now you see your screw holes where you need to screw screws back. I will start with big ones. Once everything screwed in, you can put your old uh, cover back if you want, or you can leave it naked, it's, it's optional. That's it. Not that scary, is it? So now we have a fully water-cooled 1080 Ti. I will do the same with uh, two other 1080 Ti's and uh, my 1070. I'll replace the water block. All four cards are now done. You see, it's not that scary. And funny fact is that uh, NVIDIA is actually not voiding your warranty when you're installing water cooling blocks on it because it's just a different method of cooling rather than, you know, messing with the GPU itself. So it's really cool. Encourage you to do it yourself. Now you know how to turn your regular gra uh, graphic cards into water cooled one. That's done. With this bad boy here, if you're building the one from scratch, you will need to install power supply, motherboard, RAM, CPU, the pump, and all that regular stuff. I will now install the CPU water block. Bloody hell, it's white. Now CPU water block is installed, now I will put new radiators in. Alright, this one done, now the top one. New radiators are installed, we have our GPUs ready, and now I'll show you how the loop works. So here we have two outputs. This one, the pump, 
pushes water out of this one. And this is an intake. This is our starting point. This will go to the radiator. From the radiator, it will go to uh, the bottom GPU. Then we will connect two GPUs here. Out of GPU, next step, go to that radiator. From that radiator, it will go to the CPU. And from, from the CPU, it will go back to the pump. That's the plan. Let's do it. In theory, we're done. And now we need to clean all system because I'm still using old pump. And the old pump had that red liquid in it. So I will use distilled water. I need to put that in the system, turn it around and drain it again. We need to let this liquid into the system and do a loop. To do so, you need to start your computer. It's recommended to use a separate power block, power supply, which I don't have on, on me. But if you would use it, you will need to conduct to contacts on the motherboard output. This is because power supplies are clever and they won't start without motherboard being connected. Since I don't have a separate uh, power supply, I'll just start my machine and then stop it. It's not good, but should work. Make sure to turn your system off before this level goes here, because the, the worst thing for your pump is uh, running dry. And stop it. Now some of the liquid is in the system and we need to put more in. I will use this this time because it's just after this dishwasher should be alright. And it will be easier for me. Turn it off before it goes dry. See, these are remains of the old liquid. We need to get rid of it. I think that's all right. Now we can drain it. It's time to put actual um, water cooling liquid in. It's all right if some of the distilled water will be still in your system because traditional method of doing it is to put distilled water in the system and that and then add anti-corrosion thingies in this is a non-toxic stuff by the way so this is pretty much it i will fill up the pump clean everything and my maintenance is done once you've finished, it is recommended to leave the system like that running for at least 24 hours. That way you will see if there are any leaks, plus all the air will get out. water cooling stuff you will need a couple of molex extenders fan extenders obviously to connect all these fans for the lights gpu lights and uh, cpu water block lights are xspc three millimeters led lights i'm using nzxt uh, led strips and controller for the fans i'm using NZ nzxt controller this allows me to control fans uh, in software and some fans are controlled manually with Lamptron CF525. If you are working in a studio it is not really needed but I was building this station while I was still working from home and as you can imagine this kind of setup can be really noisy. Don't let the price of such a setup frighten you. Right? You can plan everything as an ongoing project. After all, this is the major difference from Apple computers. This is the reason why VFX artists are using PCs everywhere in big studios too. 
Your system can grow, it can transform, it can adapt to new tasks. In fact, this workstation started with, in another case, with a single 980 card in it. Then there were a couple of cards, then a new motherboard, then updated RAM, then new hard drives and so on, till it transformed into this. It actually took me a couple of years to build this workstation. Now I have several machines, render units with more GPUs in it, but you know, that's the, the process. My point is, you don't need to buy everything straight away. Of course you can if you, if you can, but you can cleverly plan everything and start building step by step. Before all that fancy stuff, I was a Mac user. Hope you guys enjoyed it, hope I didn't miss anything, if I did, please let me know in the comments. Thumbs up if you're not afraid of GPU water-cooled cards anymore, and I see you guys soon. Peace.